I have to say for well before anybody starts talking thanks you guys rock and I I feel um jazzed and privileged to be in you know in counted as one of the peeps in all of this <laughs> <laughs> you're one of the main peeps <laughs> oh you're so sweet <laughs> so it's well, thanks for that January 23rd 2018 today was day one of the alleged court case in Eastern District of Tennessee with Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and Rain. And I'd like to say that it's also day one of hashtag all, all in caps, becomes transparent now in all caps. I love that. Yep. I started that and I've noticed that others have picked it up and begun to use it and I love yeah. it. I was watching the, the different hashtags that were trending uh, for HATJ and um, Universal Backdoor. So a couple of them. You know that Universal yeah. Backdoor, uh, when, I, when I finally put in my head together what, uh, what that term was talking about, uh, at just the most extensive database ever is what it sounds like. Yes, and that's actually one of the things. What I've got here is the um, the precipe, which is now a standing precipe. And I, I pulled out, um, I didn't print all of it because I just wanted the main part of it. But since you jumped right in there, Danny, if I can find it, I think that's a great one to start with. So if people wanted to look it up, it's this is document 98, and on page 7, towards the top paragraph here, um, the, uh, let me just read. Well, I want to say, BZ, you have that up on the IUV, right? Yeah, you want me to screen okay. it? Well, no, I was going to say that I, I will be putting a link, as usual, I will be putting a link to that that is at can be found at the IUV in the body of the show more section of my video on the one that I will be doing. Of course, I, I can't control what you guys do, but that's what I do. <laughs> okay, so what I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna read the whole paragraph, which is paragraph Q, okay, but I'm gonna read part of it. The beginning of it talks about on July 24th, 2017, there was universal intelligence to confirm that the foreign actors had chosen to make their threat against POTUS imminent instant. And then she goes on, Heather's talking about some other stuff. Um, and the part that I want to talk about, she says, I chose to hyper accelerate the completion of the universal unification. And remember, we'll talk about that because that's really fun to play with. Uh, because that's all the universal unification and de-escalate the imminent instant foreign threat against POTUS. I catalyzed all said notices, universal unification, tripped all planetary alarms, and a real-time status check of my NCIC by presenting myself at the White House insisting they run my passport, giving them one of the foreign actors, organizers to track my mobile phone number and my then current lodging information at Trump International Hotel, Washington, DC. So now we're getting to the part that I, that speaks to exactly what you're talking about. So tell us again, Danny, what it was that, that really you felt into on that. Oh, um, on what you just read or the universal back door? What, what are you the asking universal about? Universal back door, because that's what we're going to. Okay. So what I gather about the universal back door is it is a repository, a, a running record uh, from when, from when the whole shebang started for, you know, before, before we're ever any of us are aware of. And that it's such a complete and accurate record of what's gone on that that record itself, just the information there uh, will serve to uh, 
assist in unwinding the the big rat's nest that we we right. got in front and, of us. And often referred to as the Akash or the Akashic records is another way that's termed. Okay, so, that's interesting. All right. Yeah, Heather goes on to say the foreign actors were caught off guard by my actions that night. All universal reports and intelligence gathered confirm that the foreign actors were irate at me and scared of the imminent risk of their exposure, capture, and more, especially in light of the fact that POTUS, U.S. military and law enforcement, now had universal support, including but not limited to the universal backdoor of all records held within, within, for universal cleanup. And within is not referring to a giant supercomputer or a big cement building. <laughs> there's there's uh, four components right here of the universal back door. And there's many also who are watching and partaking in this conversation energetically so that's we are all it so that gives new meaning and new understanding for we're all in this together we're all doing and creating this we are all unwinding this and we are all creating this anew well and i i wanted to say too because of the minute you started said that I so clearly see that now, as I was telling you in our last video, but also just now I'm reminded of what I have said many times in regards to the EO 13818. We are all also complicit yes. in that. And I feel like that's important to point out too. Um, and I don't know why that came in just now, but um, you know, I give what I get anymore. So, well, the only way you can really truly unwind it to, you know, be a unification is to account for the truth of how we got into the situation to begin with. And uh, I don't, I don't know where the original low vibrations came from. I, I, I just have a suspicion that it's somehow associated with the story of Pandora's box and that it was maybe judgment that was released out onto the world that that you know caused all the sorrows and uh hmm. this is just uh this is just trying to put together in a moment something that uh i don't know that i have the ability to totally comprehend yet especially uh, now with the idea that this universal back door is uh an acronym or not an acronym a synonym for the akashic records that's uh that's pretty potent i think of there well and remember all of this is source wanting to know source i am am i and the trajectory that we've talked about out away from that you know you go out you go forth in all levels in all dimensional and all frequency energetic ranges in body and not in body um and you go out and you you go and you experience you create you know and we got on the trajectory and we got you know a, a lot of beings got together and set up a game and we played it really well and we took it to down every place so in one perspective you know a very valid perspective is yeah we you know some of us were horrible and went to these terrible places and oh my god and, and that's a valid perspective. But if you broaden that perspective out a bit and you, and you step into more of the truth of who you are, you see that is a valid perspective. But now I can have a, a little wider view and I can see that there's more to it and that we are all created in this. We all co-created, coordinated cooperation in bringing this to its fullest extent. Or from a linear viewpoint, we were complicit in that. And as we make the trajectory to come back into the full physical embodiment ascension, where we become that factualized singularity of source and all at the same time, 
then we have to unwind it all because it is very far or the farthest we took it the farthest you could possibly go from the truth of who we are well i gotta say even for okay so i shouldn't say even for me because you know as you know i'm just uh recently out of my flip-flops um and but i can see now too where as as i personally am making that transition from the linear, more linear aspects of my being into the more quantum aspects of my being. There is, of course, still a lot of that programming and conditioning that we've all had. And there's also, because of the duality of everything, the good and bad, light and dark, um, that we've all seen, it's, for me anyway, it seems that too is a bit of habit of looking at things in that manner. Um, and you're right, it takes a stepping back. And that's for me, I've, over the last few days, because... <laughs> I've been, of course, because of Conscious Conversation Central and my willingness to put my email out there and, and ask folks to, hey, contact me if you don't feel like you want to put a comment in the, you know, comment section or if you don't want to join the Facebook group and, you know, talk publicly. I, I, I'm still here, you know, send questions, whatever. So I get questions, well, can you help me understand this? How, how, do, how do I go about doing this? Those kinds of things. So I've been trying to think to myself, well, and, and somebody actually said, you know, what is your elevator speech? And I don't have <laughs> First of all, I don't have an elevator speech. Actually, it was Lisa. She said, well, what is your elevator speech? I said, I don't really have one. Talk about mixing so, but <laughs> Right? So I, I've been thinking about it, though, and I, I can only think about it, of course, for myself. And I, I know for myself, that's the first thing for me that I had to do. And that is be willing to step back a little and try to look at things from all kinds of angles, because looking was that I think it's it was Einstein or someone who said that you can't fix the problem right, the from the same place you it started from. So you have to look at things from a different perspective. And if you can broaden that perspective, and you know what, take a beat. Not everything has to be answered right away. <laughs> and step back and try to look at something because you know, oh I don't know. If you were a mechanic and you know something's wrong and you can't see anything, I think you're going to change the angle from which you're looking at before you try to go in willy-nilly and just fix it because some guy over here is telling you that, hey, you know, there's something under here with, that you can't see. But I want you to reach your hand down there and fiddle with it. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of the way we've been doing things because so-and-so over there said, and he's got all this learning he's he's had and he knows what he's talking about so pay attention to him and stick your hand under there and wiggle that nut around her a little bit you know and it's just it, I don't know take a breath so this is my elevator speech <laughs> I'm just developing it step back <laughs> <It's all about> <laughs> I was gonna ask what floor we were going to <laughs> Hang with me, man, because I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> but I mean, really, you know, just take a minute and look at things from a different perspective and step back. And yeah, okay, so become a puzzle piece collector. You don't have to buy everything somebody's trying to sell you. You don't have to. You can listen. 
take it in, let it roll around in the old noodle for a while. You don't have to, just because you're considering an idea doesn't mean you have to buy it. You let it sit around for a while and it might, you might not um, agree with anything and everything, let's say I say or somebody else says, but if you at least consider it and allow it to stay in your head instead of just pushing it off to the side, you might find that it, it'll give you a different angle to look at something. And I think that's the first step to any of this and all of this. Yeah, because I, we can't, yeah. I, know, I, I agree. Um, uh, the biggest part of the, what the static nature of our system is from the lack of people inspecting these ideas that are just being bombarded across their experience. And until you take a look at them for the first time inspection, uh, you can't look at the ideas again, and that's respect. So they can't pay any respect until they look the first time. And what we've got going on in the court system, uh, what Varlin today uh, declared or ordered that the price of pay that was filed yesterday is stricken. And I guess, uh, I guess Heather has filed another price of pay. Uh, she wrote it out by hand uh, while right in front of the judge at the table there, I guess. And Handwritten, you can see. Yeah, yes, she sure did. It's on the lined paper. And then the uh, the limitations on the types of what facts and information that are going to be allowed to reach the jurors. I mean, what they they are showing here the the level of darkness that they want those jurors to sit in and to to deny the true nature of how this entire case uh, came to be in front of uh, Judge Varlin to begin with, you know, what, what prompted the arrests of Heather and Randy to like to, to not even be able to mention the, the term TDA account. Are you kidding me? Like what, what kind of fair and, and, and highest and best purpose for all is that? It's just absolute signs of, the deepest corruption that, that I could have ever imagined. Well, and, well, and you, you just described what the case, the alleged case and the Trojan, you know, giraffe, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that you described in a video that you did earlier today with Heather and Tushy Giraffe is that it's always been a red herring. It's always been, it's a play, it's a show. And it's been orchestrated that way at various levels throughout various different agencies, different um, parts of the corporation. Even in Eastern District of Tennessee, there are some there as well. And Part of what we talked about on the call where there was the four of us, Lisa and Katie and Sheila and myself about what you know, they experienced in the courtroom. And you just talked about it right now, you know, well, kind of, it's kind of a farce, you know, that they're presenting here. Well, that's the beauty of it because so many people were under and still are quite frankly the illusion that there is a justice system there is honor there are sides and you have reasonable discourse and you weigh the things and there's amicable settlement and all this kind of stuff and nothing could be further from the truth no that's absolutely right case. it's in every case that has ever been ever and it's well get this by design Mm -hmm. Well, and that's why I said that um, had I not been there this time in the courtroom myself, I don't think I would have actually comprehended what I have shared with you, BC, that I am now comprehending. And that is, and this is why I'm saying that we need to be able to step back Mm -hmm. and view things from a different angle because when and I've, I, I've had some comments on some of the 
some of the documents that I've read and recorded and put on my channel. You know, folks that want to say, well, you know, they're doing this and they're guilty and that's just all there is. And, but the thing, what I'm trying to say here is that stepping back and just because you think you know that this is law and this is the way it is, when it's not at all, so clearly in that courtroom, either, it's not even any way, shape, or form close to what anyone, any American in this country thinks of as law. It's not. I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've heard it. And when the transcripts come out, I will say again, if they don't scrub them because they did it before, it's just, it was just gobsmacking to me on a 3D level to to think that that law is what we think it is in this country is so wrong it is so wrong and there it is nothing what you think it is at all well i and heard the judge wrong. instruct those people to i i heard him instructing potential jurors that no the actual sitting jurors now not the potential ones the ones that they sat today, I heard him instruct them to, they were only allowed to pay attention to the law as he said it to them. I'm sorry, let that sink in a minute. As he tells them the law is, what? If there's really laws in this country, let's just pretend for a minute that there are. And I'm telling you what I saw, there's not. So the first thing, anybody who hears this and says, oh, well, she just, you know, she doesn't know and na 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 na. And I, hey, look, in some of those videos, I said, well, I don't know, you can't prove it by me. I'm telling you, I was there. And, I, and I'm telling anyone who says that, I challenge you to go and sit in any courtroom you want to. You can do it. You're allowed. They'll let you go in. And you tell me if what you're hearing is any way, shape, or form of what anybody thought of as actual law. Well, there's a and couple. And I feel like it, it implies, that applies to every single thing in this country now. I'm telling you, in the world, in my opinion, at this moment, the medical industry, the food industry, the law industry, every, and note, note that I'm saying industry after every one of those. It is not what you think it is. None of this is. And the only way anybody's ever going to actually get any kind of clarity about it is to stop having your mind so closed and take a second and step back and kind of look at some of the things that you're hearing and not just believe because that guy over there went to school, which by the way, have a question in your mind, who taught him and who taught him? And who taught him and who decided that was right? right? Because I'm telling you that has a lot to do with this. And we can't unravel any of this if people just wander around and say, well, they've got to know better than me. So I'm just going to let them tell me. Well, this is all about people reclaiming their authorship of their own perceptions. We've been conditioned to give that away at every step. That's part of what our compulsory education system is all about. It, it takes uh, a young developing being away from its, its parents, its primary relationship, and uh, sets it up through uh, a series of, of pretty crazy and dumb hurdles throughout the day where uh, he might have, what, six different teachers? And throughout the course of the day, every time they ring a bell, okay, I give my perception away, my authorship away to another person and another person. And our entire system is set up to keep us in that zombie state. Um, 
What you were saying, Sheila, when you just rattled off a bunch of different industries where we all know huge, huge deception exists and, and it's taking society away from the way, you know, our beings would truly want to live. And, uh, oh, darn it, I just, just lost my train of thought there. Oh, okay. Um, the only way that, that we can truly realize that we've given away the authorship of our perceptions is to be shown uh, to have the mirror shoved in our face and shown that, hey, we've got wrong perceptions, inaccurate perceptions. We've been lied to. And, and as, soon as, as soon as a consciousness admits to itself that, that it's been lied to, then, then it's just got a whole bunch of work to do. Um, it, you know, the spiritual journey's begun. Well, well and, I, and what it is, is there's no experts. The only expert, you know, there's three experts on this call. Right. So Danny is Danny's expert. And Sheila is yep. Sheila is busy is busy. Now I right. can experience lots of things. I can partake in lots of things. I can co-create lots of things. I could ask for someone else's, um, take on something because they've been playing with that more and so they might have a wider experiential range in that whatever that is it could be very linear it could be um very creative it doesn't matter but i'm the ultimate expert is a linear term a, a better way to phrase it is that i'm the ultimate I tech device on that, which is a resonance meter. And how in that does that, how does that whole experience, is it vibrating? It will actually have a vibratory effect on my being. And so I would call up the two parts of that part of my eye tech is my resonance meter and my discernment. And so I can see if I'm talking about my discernment, how is that feeling in my body? Because I do know if I am still for a moment or trust myself for a moment or even let myself notice, which is she was saying, step back. I say that you're noticing things. Right. Is there discord? Is there a, a, a friction, a frequency vibrational friction going on there? So that's a little noticing point for me. What's that about? Feel into that. And then the resonance is something over here. So if I'm moving towards or, or playing more over here, do I have a greater resonance? Am I achieving a, a coherence with that? And those are squash, just like you said, Danny, in school, right? If that's by design, if you keep moving and moving, you don't have that. Those are shut down in various ways. They're kind of boxed in and containerized and put constraints on them. And not because it has anything to do with education. That's the other beauty of it. All those industries that you mentioned, they're actually all tied together. They're all, get this, bank, trade, and finance. Mm -hmm. Yep. So take that out of what you might think of, you know, because Heather was an expert in bank, trade, and finance. And one might look at that from a linear, more narrow, confined, expert perspective. Well, that's about banking and high numbers and how you trade different things and, and, you, and you have the banking of it, right? And then you finance, you know, the expansion of, of your creative ideas for businesses or whatever. Okay, well, I would like to have people notice those words a little differently. So bank, trade, and finance. You bank your product. You trade your product. And you create the selling of product to finance other things that you want to do either with that product or as an offshoot and expansion of the business that's the core product. So whether it's education or the government reported, the judicial system, child protective services, the health industry, the pharmaceutical industry, school, goes on and on and on. They are all systems within the same industry, which is bank, trade, and finance, because they're all banking, trading with commodities, which are human beings, for various 
revenue generation vehicles, shall we say to use linear terms, and that's what's all going to be made very apparent. So some people would say, well, yeah, those Luciferians, yeah. Or they may say the justice system or the jails is a big business, you know, all of, but they're all related because what they're all doing is keeping people small, keeping people not knowing the truth of who they are, having them any chance to think about that, and exuding the, the etheric sustenance for them, which is their energetic frequency vibration when they're low, they're small, constrained, they're fearful. That's delicious energy to eat, and it is consumed. You know, uh, uh, Sheila and I, were we hang bookmarks for things that we're going to talk about next, and we're right on the doorstep for uh, one of the bookmarks uh, relating some patterns that I saw in falconry with the same patterns that, that you're talking about right now through the finance and banking system. Um, does that feel as good to go into right now? I can, I can jump into it. Sure. Okay. Um, this was in the, in the 2000s, probably around 2009, 2010, um, uh, at some prompting from my mother, I uh, went and investigated falconry and uh, my Would you wife, mind explaining what falconry is? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, falconry is... Uh, is a very old practice of uh, hmm, acquiring a bird of prey and interfacing with that bird in such a way that you can take it out into the wild, have it hunt, and it'll come back to you. And that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. Yeah, so and the and the uh, and the way that that's accomplished is pretty much exactly what the powers that were's playbook uh, that they're using uh, with debt-based money being the reins of slavery. And so one of the first things when I became a, a, an apprentice falconer, uh, I have, was under the guidance of a master falconer for two years. And, and at the same time, uh, I was just starting my, really my true seeking journey. Uh, I recently, uh, injured and retired out of the police work. And, um, you know, I had, I had found some things in the world that just didn't make sense. And, and I was picking them apart. And one of them was peak oil. And that led me to study the economy. And, and, and just as an aside, I've got a master's degree. I've got my MBA from Penn State. I worked in a bank right out of grad school. Uh, and, and at no time, did anybody in undergrad, grad school, or when I was working for the bank, uh, tell me how money was created? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I had no idea. So what you're saying, Sheila, about it doesn't matter if you've got training or a degree or initials after your name, if you're part of this system, you've been held in the darkness and only fed that information which uh, allows you to operate the way they want you to operate in the system. So, so with falconry, uh, working with an apprentice, one of the first things that, that we did is, uh, you know, I made all my equipment and, and had housing for the bird, but then you, you go out and you trap a wild bird. That's the process of falconry. And uh, so you're taking, you're taking a creature that's already fending for itself. It, it, it already knows what it needs, when to get it. Uh, and, and you are forcing it to live inside your constraints. So when you trap a bird, the first thing that you do is you get a very accurate weight. And depending upon that kind of bird, you might want it down to a tenth of a gram accuracy. And uh, then over the course of a few weeks to a month, you drop that bird's weight by a known amount, a set amount every day and uh, you're working with it on a long lead. It's got little anklets on now. It's got jesses, it's all tethered off. Uh, it's not free anymore. And you keep dropping its weight 
until it starts behaving the way you want it to behave. Like, hey, it's really going after the lure that I got a hunk of meat on now. Well, yeah, because you're starving it and it's hungry. Well, finally, you get it to the point. It's this, it's, you know, not starving enough that it's going to die, but, <laughs> you know, still strong enough to fly and hunt. And, and that, once you know the weight for your bird, like that's, you, you're always maintaining target weight and you get in cycles and you know the exact time of the day when your bird's going to be strongest. Okay. You know, this many hours after breakfast or, or whatever, and you take it out and, and it hunts, it's still got its, you know, wild programming. But by the time it gets done that battle of dispatching its prey, catching its prey, uh, it's really too tired to, to do anything else, but come back to the falconer. And if the falconer ever gets a sense that the bird's going to fly away is getting too strong, just holds it in more scarcity. If the bird's chewing through its jesses, you know, the ropes that are holding it to its perch get stronger, stronger cordage, uh, different kinds of material. And once I, you know, at the same time I was reading G. Edward Griffin's uh, Creature from Jekyll Island and also <laughs> Ellen Brown's Web of Debt. I've actually had a few emails back and forth with Ellen Brown way back then. That was fun. But it just all hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, oh my gosh, the system, our government is unleashing this falconry pattern on all of us. They're holding us in such such scarcity that all of our behavior is so predictable and therefore controllable. And the more in debt we get, the more, the more we're in their trap. And, and so I had a huge crisis of conscience and I remember calling my Falcon sponsor and, and telling him, look, I just, I just can't unsee this. I, I know you're approving me to, to be on my own and, and be a general Falconer, but, but I just can't do this. I, I, I fed the bird up that I had trapped from the wild and, uh, you know, took it out flying. And, you know, one time pretty, pretty quickly, he, he didn't come back. Like he, yeah. those birds, they don't, they don't want to, they don't want to be trapped in that experience. But uh, it, it was all about the only reason that bird is free is because the falconer, me, got light, got some different ideas. And, and yeah, I was searching for him at that time, but we've got, we've got some people that uh, hmm, are very influential over large groups of people who don't inspect or respect, who are just following along uh, as part of the, part of the old way. And, and they are just using falconry techniques. Like look at, uh, Look at the kind of scarcity that they have forced upon Heather Antucci Giraffe and, and Randall Keith Bean. Like Rand, Randy's still in, incarcerated. He's, how, how He's can you really, confinement. yeah, how, how can you, how can you have a hearing and, and, and mm -hmm. proper, properly stand up for yourself when, when you're in those kind of conditions? Like, does he even... Like, does he have a computer or does he got to write everything by hand? I, I don't quite know, but. No, he doesn't. You know, and he has to pay for, you know, for, I mean, there's a lot of logistics and. Oh yeah. 40 cents an email. Money. Like, are you kidding me? It, it's uh, the system is entirely backwards uh, from what we've been told. And it reminds me of, uh, I can't remember. Maybe one of you can remember the name. It was a CIA director back in the Reagan era. And there was a White House uh, staff member who overheard a conversation between the CIA director and Reagan. And I'm just paraphrasing here. Uh, Reagan asked him. Dulles. Pardon? It was Dulles, I believe. Uh, no, it wasn't Dulles. Um, I would have remembered that. But he was uh, early. Dulles was earlier. He's around the. Dulles was the time around JFK. Oh, okay. Um. So the question that, that Reagan had asked the CIA director was, well, how will you know when your job as CIA director is complete? And, or, or maybe talking about the disinfo campaign, because the response back was, Mr. President, I'll know that 
the CIA's uh, disinformation campaign is complete when absolutely everything that the American people think that they know is wrong. And, and right there, that's, that's a perfect example of the energy, a perfect example of where we're at. It, it's, you can see observations everywhere, even going to look at our language and seeing how just over the past couple hundred years, the definitions and meanings for these words that we throw around every day has been completely flip-flopped to mean exactly the opposite. And when you take the word live, L-I-V-E, that's what we're all trying down here trying to do. We're just trying to live. And you turn it backwards, it's E-V-I-L. So evil, it's not about some motive to, to just be totally malicious. It's, it's this motive to turn everything backwards, exactly backwards from the way that we would naturally choose for our else, choose for ourselves, and then... And then when, when we act out, then, then we're labeled as crazy. We're, we're you know, it's, it's lunacy. And, mm -hmm. and that's where you get, like, so many of the symptoms that are popping out in society, like from, from who knows what, from, from our poisons in our food or from the chemtrails or from Wi-Fi or from dirty electricity or from stuff that we don't even know about yet. Uh, these big classes of diseases pop up and diabetes is another good one. You, you've got a whole continuum here of just sugar poisoning, one of the most addictive substances in the world. It, it's, it's been labeled a food and, 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 and you almost don't have a choice but to consume sugar if you, if you go anywhere uh, without having planned your, your food out to begin with. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Our entire society has been turned around backwards, and, and our court systems is just one example to see just how backwards it is. And, and instead of the, uh, what is it, the, the eyes of justice are blind? Well, well, that takes on a whole new meaning, you know? <laughs> like, how does, how does, Lady, is it Lady Liberty? How does Lady Liberty know uh, which side of the scale is, is you know, got the better meat on it or, or you know the more weight the more substance if she can't see the scale so uh what they're doing in knoxville with uh with the restrictions of the the ideas that they're going to allow in front of the jury is is really putting a blindfold on justice and and they're telling you right in plain sight that they're doing it with that statue well i have to say that again for the first time in regards to this alleged case, I can see why this particular, okay, I don't, I don't have any inside information on this, but this is my take. Why this particular alleged case? Why this particular thing to call it out, to make it completely transparent? For me, just for the most part, just what you said in regards to scarcity, in regards to when you talk to most any person, doesn't matter if they're asleep or awake. Well, generally awake folks, generally whom we refer to as awake folks would have a bit of a different take, but take the most 3D linear person and the minute you mess with their money or you something comes up that has to do with money because it, it, that's all the scarcity you can't have you know what you need what you want without money in this moment of now look how many folks jumped on the TDDA bandwagon when that all came out that's just proof of that right there so what perfect kind of thing to have all of the corruption, all of the everything come out. This is the one. This is why this had to be the one. Because I'm telling you how many people have really begun to try to look at things from a different angle 
especially those that went out and accessed their accounts <laughs> and know for a fact they exist. I'm one of those. And I know, regardless of what the dog and pony show is trying to say at the moment, because that'll come out too, and everybody who ever watches this will also know, you just go and try to put your routing number and your account number in and miss, put one wrong number in and see <laughs> if you actually get anything, because that doesn't work. At any rate, my point here is, this is why in my mind that this was the angle that had to be taken to bring everything transparent. Because when you talk about money, people sit up and listen at this moment of now. So there had to be an in. This is my thoughts on this now. There had to be an in to get people to pay attention. And so then once the attention has gotten, now some people kind of have already slunk away and said, oh, it was all BS and because maybe they didn't access their accounts. But I'm telling you the ones that did are the ones that are paying really close attention right now because they know this is real. Can I play with a, a, a little bigger perspective? Please do. So all of the points that you guys just brought up are beautiful illustrations of exactly why on a lot of pieces of it. Yes, but now that's why I'm saying, I see that it's much bigger than that. I see that it is, but I also see that it had to be done in the 3D linear for some, not all. No, for all, no, for all. well actually that's, see that's part of it there. You know, you, you brought up so many good points. It's kind of hard to, to let me see if I can tie them a little bit together because they actually all are r related. That's why, that's, that was the other thing I was going to say because they really are. It all, it is huge. It is just, every time I say that I feel like I'm, I'm standing on a precipice of something so huge, this is why. Because right. it is so huge. It so involves on the one everything. Hand, the, the one hand, there's, there's lots of um, <laughs> cosmic irony in a lot of the things you laid out. And that would be one way to phrase it. Another way to phrase it is the balance. But another way to phrase it is where you can really see the polarity. And when you come into a perspective where you have the... the um, The cognitive dissonance, the koan of those things is when you can actually see the end of the polarity of it and the unification of all of it. So let's see if I can keep it simple. Um, money had to be it because that's what everybody pays attention to. Okay, so the other flip side of that is money is it because in reality everything is is in the scope and thread and wharf and weave of bank, trade, and finance. Well, that's true. Yeah, right? okay, I got gotcha. you. You're so right. Then you say, well, everybody part of the you gave the, the beautiful illustration of the falconry, right? And how that's a great metaphor so to say, of how they're training us to programming and all that kind of thing because it's the scarcity, okay? So again, the balance of that is it's because we are absolute abundance. And so if we're source going to no source, and I am, am I, we go out to the furthest, the most, the thing that is an anathema to the, to that of which we are and fully experience that and come back to that whole complete unity, unification of those ideas, we realize that really is us, which is abundance. So play with it over here. So I'm gonna go around a couple more sides. So then you have the whole money system and the loans and, and you talked about, Danny, about, you know, 
I was in banking and I didn't really know how money is created. Well, that's one of the biggest ironies of all. We are the value. We are that which brings the quote unquote money or the construct or the representation of our value into the system. And that's how they monetize and just your very signature because everything is prepaid, pre approved and pre authorized by source for each original, which is us. Seamus is not in a bank, and when you go to take out a loan, he, the leprechaun does not hop over to the back room and, and bring up the cold, gold sack and say, here you go. But oftentimes I use it as a wonderful soft way to play with people and think, you know, so how many sacks of gold did Seamus bring out for your loan? What are you talking about? Well, of course you went to a bank and, and Seamus had to bring it to you because where do you suppose that money came from anyways? What was the very act of you signing? Just like anything else. But again, the other flip side of that is when you, when you come into the unity and the wholeness of it and you realize that you are abundant. In fact, you are the source of all that is the value. Not per se because you have to do something, but just simply because you be. And in that being, you create and you co-create and you exchange. And the, the last part may be, there's lots of other pieces, but the last piece is when you talk about, you know, again, the falconry was one of the things that brought up where, where you're starving the bird, right? And you're tamping it down. And that's the kind of the, the, the give and, and, you know, retreat with the reward, you know, and, and have that push me, pull you there. The the flip to that, the unification balance of that is that they're terrified, if we're going to do a linear perspective of it, of us and them, which is a very linear <laughs> construct. Um, I can see it, I can understand it, I don't hold it. But when we come from that perspective, they're terrified of us. So part of the construct, part of the constraints, Part of the mind, mass mind control and programming must be to make it so that there is no stillness. There is no opportunity to just be and create or just to let the mind float or let the heart sing. Because lest that happen, they're in serious trouble. Well, BZ, you're you're right on the you're right on a huge point because it wasn't until I was injured out and connected with a whole bunch of unstructured time that that I was able to, but do my do my inner work and and all of it it really happened by itself naturally once once I got acquainted with time you know I just started to put things together myself so I know that everybody else has the ability to do that and. Absolutely. And yeah. So that's well, that's yeah, a huge we, portion. Is that's the time. something we were talking about before, Lunacy, was that it's I I I have I really have noticed over the past two years since I started having conscious conversations before I even started the channel, um, that it seemed apparent to me that for the most part, not always, but for the most part most of the folks that were the most it seemed seemed at least to me to be on the on a path of knowing who they are and seeing what was going on on the planet had been had 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 themselves in one way or another for whatever the reason removed from the system, whether it be through injury and retirement, disability, retirement, just retirement, um, whatever the, the what, however it happened, removed from the system. Not all by any means, but for the most part. Um, and now I, I'm sure that now, 
I'm, I'm at least what I'm starting to sense, see and feel around me is that it seems like m m more folks that are still in the system are be there at least well then this i feel like this has been going on for a couple of years of going you know something don't seem to be too right around here not quite sure what it is but something don't feel right around here so th there's been some of that and i it feels like it's coming faster and faster so that's a good thing so i don't know it just feels like and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting really, really tense. Well, I'll jump in here because that's another beautiful piece where there is that, that counterbalance or the part where the unity comes in. Because when, wherever you are, however it happens, right, and you come to, you call, you refer to them oftentimes, uh, Sheila, as ascension symptoms. What they really are is a response within your being to the upgraded frequencies of light that are coming in and the actual physiological, mental, emotional, energetic, and electromagnetic changes that are going on within you. Right. And when you do that, you are changing not only every fiber of your being, and everything from a cellular lever in all of your organs and all of it. So skin is an organ, all of it, right? Mm -hmm. But you're changing everything in all of your realities as well. And so the density, like in everything else, must leave. So the drop and all of those um, stucknesses and all of the, the grind. And, you know, so think of all the different metaphors you might use for that, right? Mm -hmm. That must all be expressed and expelled. So a linear way you might describe that is your life goes to hell. <laughs> and you have an injury or you have this or you have that or you're homeless or whatever it is, right? Okay. And in that, it's not because tuning into who you are brings that upon you, but it's because you're, the very essence of who you are is coming, it's cracking out of that shell. It's breaking all of that and it's coming forth and that must fall away. The friends, the spouse, partner, the job, whatever it is, it's different for different people, right? And it must fall away. And in that, some people refer to it as the dark night of the soul. There's, there's lots of ways to, to hold it. But in that, what you're actually doing is coming forth, not falling apart. And, and you, you experience much more the truth of who you are because that stuff falls away. And you can go, oh, wow, look at that. I got an arm under there. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm a, I am one slow poke, man. Let me just. Oh, I don't think so. Well, no, I mean, I, I say it that way because the falling away, the, the, the cracking of the shell, um, I was I was terribly ill for 10 years still coming back from that so that's what I mean it's not mm. and and I, I perhaps uh, you know I'm sure I'm I'm sure that uh, there was a point to all that <laughs> well I'm, there but, is because the, the other beautiful cosmic irony and balance to that is you set that up with your guys and your team before you came here. Because the rate, the timing, and how you go through that, you know, was already decided by you. Because you had certain missions to come here to do, because you had certain training and learnings to go through. To, for, I'm talking about this particular lifetime, this particular moment where there is standing room only on this planet and they're galaxies deep waiting to get in. And I'm not being metaphoric about that. I'm actually being very literal about that. And so we chose all of that. And those are the different weights. There are waves to that waking up 
nests that people refer to. There are waves to how they do. There are some of us who woke up long before and boy, it was a hard road to hoe because there wasn't any of these kind of conversations <laughs> happening at all. You know, and you know, the, a lot of the, the black sheep of the family and, and all those kinds of things. Um, yet there were reasons, and those were also trainings for, for those various things. You know, I, in, on all of this work, I, my name has always been out there. There is no other moniker that I go by simply because that was something that I came in with is that's, you know, I'm here for the truth of who I am and, and to help others with that. And so they know where to find me. They visit me quite often um, and keep quite good tabs on me, right? But that's part of the whole thing. So we do come in waves and we did choose this. Ahead of, so again, when you brought out now the perspective, nothing is done to us. Is there a perspective where, yes, terrible things were done to us and we were this? Yes. Is that the full expansive perspective? Absolutely not. Is that the perspective that your soul holds? Absolutely not. Is that the perspective that source holds? Absolutely not. Are those perspectives honored, loved, and cherished because you have gone and played in the most sublime, amazing, spectacular way to go all the way through that and, and play in every nook and cranny and ferry it out, all of those emotions and the range of all of those frequency vibrations, the signature vibration of each word that you talked about, Lunacy, and the turning of it and the playing of it and the twisting of it and the, the, you know, the kind of turning it upside and down. Yeah. I mean, there is such amazing celebration going on right this moment. And if we can only notice and feel it, because that's what we're here for, to bring all of this to a close, to bring it in a way where we can, uh, we, we can understand and see and recognize, cognize from a small perspective, you know, all that was done. From a larger perspective, oh, it isn't quite like that, right? It's, it's, it now includes this, and a broader and broader. So we wrap it up, you know, the three paths that I was talking about, we wrap it up, we bring that to a close. We reach out and we hold the hand of all those other beings that are in different waves, you know, in what they set up to wake up, bring them forward because there is that, you know, the phrase in here um, is one good way to, as we're, you know, we're over an hour to wrap this up is, it's, I'm sorry, I'm tired, so it's not pop thing up to me right now but uh, I, I know I know the feeling <laughs> I told Lunacy earlier I've had eight hours sleep in the last three days <laughs> universal unification okay so Heather on one of our conversations and the tour around the country at the different hotels that we would um, visit with each other in she gave a beautiful phrase. Hang on one second. When, and what she was doing was foreshadowing and telling you and calling forth and asking each of you to call forth the universal unification that's coming forward. It's not just one person. It's all of us together. It's the most unity, it's the most awareness, and the most utilization of being original that has ever been experienced in all of existence. And that's what we're creating. That's what we're bringing down. And we're growing forth out of something completely new. You know, as we talked about before, Sheila, we are creating that which we are and that is which we are becoming. We're not becoming creator beings, we already are that. We are becoming the factualized singularity that is source, unity, and that factualized, where the polarity is gone, where we become eternal in what that really means, not you know, kind of the superhero version of it. Um, and then we choose 
how we want to create all this, but we choose it consciously. We're not sitting up in a cloud before we come in and say, well, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna learn this, and, right, okay. Now it's because all of those memories are there and all of those memories, as in any time I use the word all, means all. So the universal back door. Okay, so not only are we all components of that, but we hold all of that within us. And it's not something we're gaining. It's not something we're putting on like a suit. We actually are just reigniting that. It's within us already, and it's coming back online. So that really, to wrap it back around to this document, which is the Precipe, document number 98 in the alleged case that's going on right now, right? That's what this is all about. That's the really, really, really big picture that we're all coming to cognize and come into coherence with and bring back into us. And I have to say, it's really exciting. It's just, it's just fantastically tap dancingly exciting. Yeah, you know, the vision I have in my head is uh, kind of a play on the old Tootsie Pop commercial with the owl. How many licks does it take? <laughs> it, except in this case is how many times does Heather have to repeat herself, you know, to get <laughs> to get to the center of the darkness or whatever. I don't know how you write the commercial. Right. Or, or the sweetness of the truth of who we are. And and cause, because she's... Uh, she and all of us are, and make no mistake about it, because this document is telling you that, in case you hadn't already been paying attention, that each one of us has an integral role to play in all of this. And so we're all getting to the sweetness of the truth of who we are, and we're helping those that are in the, the, the character, caricature of Varlin and Shirley and Svalto, right? And, and, um, uh, Cynthia Davidson, right? And Parker Still or Steele, depending on <laughs> what state you're in, right? You know? So, yeah. but that's what it's all about. And, and it's beautiful. You know, you started this conversation, Danny, with a reaction about, you know, the, the paperwork and, and Varlin's instructions of what could be allowed and not allowed and how can that be and so on and so forth. And again, as I said to Katie in the other video we did, that's a beautiful illustration for yourself individually and that you are then, you know, you brought yourself here to give that message, to give that illustration so that we can truly see, ah, there's a no point for a broader perspective. You know, that that never occurred before, was never occurring even though we were told it was occurring. And now we can see that. So this just in, when you just said that's a node point for a broader perspection, perspective, yep. I'd like to leave this video with that thought. Any one of us out there, when you're looking at something, and you're like, how, how can this be? Or even if it just doesn't feel right in any way, shape, or form, or you have any sort of a question, don't tamp that down anymore. Take a step back. Look around. Ask others. Don't give it away to, to, to let them inform you. But take all of that in all of that in i've i've had folks ask me how 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 are you doing what you're doing as far as like um or help me understand or or comprehend like i said the whole elevator speech thing that i was asked about that's it don't be afraid to take in as much information as you can gather if you don't feel you know and you don't feel like you can trust yourself, don't trust anybody else either. Take it all in. There's nothing wrong with that. 
considering things until you do know how you feel. Well, direct that observations hurts. are the raw material for healthy perceptions. So uh, if you don't that. feel that, if you don't feel like you've got a healthy perception, well, then you need to keep harvesting observations until you find that, that pattern among all your observations. And it just hits you on your chakra line and you're at a place of knowing, wow, it can't be, it can't be what they've been telling me. It, uh, there's too many observations that say this. So thank you for that lunacy because you just actually helped me be able to language that for, for folks in a way and, and including myself, because as far as the, well, what do they mean by knowing? Because I'm telling you, that was a big thing for me. It really was. So direct observation take that in for a second what that we are actually you and i are saying the exact same thing mm -hmm. take it in not just asking pay attention notice to use bz's words notice things direct observation take it all in and and then sit with it within your own self and that's when it becomes a knowing exactly yeah um we, we need to hang a bookmark to talk about the rest of the perception authorship process that, that great. Oh, sent, it's on my sent, list. Yeah. Yeah. She sent it to me it's in a vision. Very, very like a Dr. Seuss book. It's pretty cool. Okay. Well, it's definitely on my list and, um, and my list grows all the time. <laughs> my list is growing all the time. Well, there'll be lots more time um, for these conscious conversations with all of you. You, the two of you and, and all of the yous, as, uh, you know, BZ says. Um, however, this you has to get in bed. Yeah, I got to get some sleep so I can go and sit in that courtroom tomorrow because I don't want to miss a minute of it. Oh, yeah. Well, you won't be any, any, uh, any uh, zenning Zs tomorrow because if Heather's on cross, your uh, your pew there in the in the courtroom is going to be vibrating. <laughs> That's true. I got it. I have to say. I have to say. <laughs> I you know I, I only met Heather for the first time in October when I was here, and and at that point I sat outside. But I have to say that was one impressive bit of stuff I saw today. O M G. <laughs> That all those folks in there, I'm just, I'm, and she, and so relaxed because she knows what she's doing and she knows what the deal is. And it just, well, and it, she wasn't actually relaxed, she was stoked and she was fired up and she was jazzed and having an absolute blast. Well, that. that's what I mean, I guess, because compared to all the other stuffed shirts in the room <laughs> and the FBI agents and DOJ agents that were sitting behind us, that as Parker still was, you know, like <laughs> imploding on the stand <laughs> as they were running in and out of the courtroom with their phones in their hands, that was hysterical. Isn't it funny how the one who's most relaxed and, and comfortable in her skin in the courtroom is, is one of the only ones who's not being paid to be there? I know, right? Isn't that funny? So, but anyway, thank you. Thank you both so much. <laughs> yeah. Next time. Hey, um, I, I, I've got to go in. So that was, uh, tell me again, the name of it, it's, uh, the Trojan giraffe and the magic <laughs> beanstalk. Is that what that was? So, so I did a I did a play on words. Say, so, say so you know like the magic beanstalk, right? right? You know that. Except it's stock is I'm using it as a verb. So it it's really the Trojan giraffe and the magic bean, and then a verb stalk the deep state. Ah, I love that. I love that. Well, you know, the one, the one thing that I, we started this with, and it made me think of something, and we'll end it here, but it made me think of one, the only, one and only thing I got to read on uh, uh, an article today, 
something into the tune of Ray Gowdy saying something about um, a whole bunch of texts with the FBI talking about a secret society. What is this? Yeah, I, I saw something. There was, uh, I downloaded a video. I, I haven't vetted it yet, but uh, it's got some mainstream news coverage uh, that, that says that Congress is being uh, presented with information about secret societies. And also I saw a headline, haven't verified it for myself, uh, but said that the chief of staff uh, for the FBI uh, resigned or is stepping down. Um, there's some there's some interesting energy flow out there today. Okay. Wow. Big doings, huh, guys? Okay. Mm. <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.